Hi right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be talking about the upfront controller or UFC. I'm going to show you how, what it looks like disassembled, show you how I made it. We'll also talk about the 3D printed HUD and the 3D printed HUD camera and the glare shield updates that I've done. Through the powers of editing I've already updated it but I'll go back in time right now and show you what it looked like on the workbench. Alright, so here is the front panel. You can see it's pretty simple, um, just laser cut and painted black and then engraved. It's two glued together and you can see how there is a lip. So this, the um, square cutouts for the buttons are larger than the one in the front and that's what retains the buttons in place. So you can see that this number seven would go in there and it just drops in. So you just drop that in there, it is retained and free to move up and down. And when the back panel's on there, it'll sit out about that far. So the next panel along is this one here. This is a rear holder that is clear. It's clear because I needed it to allow the LED strip to backlight this. Um, I did try it opaque white, but it was the, the backlighting was way too dark. So I went with clear. This thing is goes on this way here and you can see that the holes in it are smaller so it retains those buttons. Bolt these two together and flip it over all the buttons don't fall out. This also has a hole cut in it and then a black part glued on there that's to hold the master caution switch. So the master caution switch I'm using is one of these. It's just a, um, a cheap arcade style push button that I've engraved that master caution logo and the only reason that I had that set back is because I wanted it to be I could just cut a hole in that but it would be sticking out sort of that far which I didn't want I want it to set backwards sort of let sort of flush with it like the real one instead of like that and you can also see that this one has normal motherboard standoffs in there that's to hold the PCBs which have the tactile switches on them so what I'll do now is I'll just put the buttons in and I'll bolt this panel together so there is the panel bolted together you can see that right now it's only held together with this one standoff so there's one bolt going through the center there which is holding that rear plastic cover on and that prevents all the buttons from falling out and when it goes into the case there'll be another four but four screws on either end there so it'll be nice and firmly bolted together but for now there's just this one bolt, bolt holding it together uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just put this master caution thing in so you can see that that just goes through there and because that is so far set inside it, you'll see that it's um, it's pretty much nice and flush there. And then I'll just screw it on. These two cables are for the light in there. There's an LED in there. Um, that is run off an Arduino that is already mounted in the main instrument panel. Okay, so the next panel is this one here. Uh, it is a thicker plastic. I think it's four millimeter thick clear. And you can obviously see that its whole purpose is just the backlight. This is all green LED strip. Again, two cables coming off together the backlighting circuit. You can see that it's got a cutout in it for the master caution switch. So this whole panel just goes on here like this. And you can see that it sits off those motherboard standoffs. So that all that LED strip is held off the um, off the back here. That's, that's to minimise hot spotting as much as I can. And then the PCB goes on top of that and then the screws go through the PCB, through this plate, into those motherboard standoffs and hold it all together like a big sandwich. All right, so the next one are the PCBs themselves. This is just prototype PCB with a whole bunch of tactile switches mounted to it. These are really long tactile switches, so they will make their way through that whole sandwich and rest up against the buttons. No LEDs on this because the backlighting is done with all the LED strip. And then on the back side here, you can see that connected all the earths together. I'll just use tin for that because it didn't need to be um, insulated or anything. And it's easier to share them share it all so i just ran tin along each side so all the earths are common and then there is one cable from each tactile switch going to one of these plugs which then fits in the leo bodner so there's two of those only because i couldn't get pcb large enough to make it one so i split it into two so all they do sits in like that and then that one sits in like that and then i just run those screws through all those motherboard standoffs and the whole thing will be one unit Okay, so that's the sandwich. You can see that the PCBs mounted on the back of that plastic. I cut squares in that, so the tactile switches actually fit in that. And then you can see how long the, the, um, the shaft of the switch is, so the button will push it. Um, and it's all held together pretty firmly. All right, you'll see that big standoff in there. The reason I used a standoff for that is because I needed a way to hold the BBI64, which is running this. 
in the old version I had that sort of I had that sort of mounted on the base of the box. There was a big box supporting it. The new version is a bit more realistic, so it's only thin. So the reason I put that stand off there is because then I just did up this, which is a little bracket, and then I just used the one screw to hold it, and it's adjustable so I can move it to where I need it. I think I got off the second one there. So that second one, I'll put a screw through that and hold it in one in place, and then the Bodnar will get bolted to that and all the cables will go up to the bod and you'll have that one USB cable that coming out the side. So I'll bolt that on now. Okay, so this is basically the completed UFC um, all screwed together. You can see that the BBI 64 is mounted on that piece of on that piece of plastic that I put in there and you can see that all the cables are sort of ad hoc thrown on it. So I've made it so it's as thin as possible. I've also just I just changed the wire to avoid confusion. So that's the one for the 12 volt backlight. Um, for the LED strip in there, and then the other cable is for the master caution light. All these spare inputs here, another cable comes into the UFC and connects to them that goes to the other things in the main instrument panel. So this is the case that I've done up for the UFC. You can see that it is 3D printed. I did it out of red because it's the only filament I had left. You can see how it mounts onto the top of the glare shield. Two screws in there, two screws in there. There is a cutout in the back here for those cables from the main instrument panel to go in and the light cables to come out um, this one here is a military style connector that i got off ebay and i just punched the center bit of it out so it is just a hole now that's where the usb cable will come out and i will 3d print an elbow and um, have some sort of fake cabling going out like in the real aircraft uh, that there is a rotary encoder on the real jet i think it's the dimming for the backlight of this however the dimming on the backlight of mine is throughout the whole the same circuit as the whole cockpit i didn't want to put a separate dimmer just for this because i don't really need it so this one will be connected to the leo bodner card and just be a uh, an extra encoder i can use that as a pause button or something so the stl for that is linked in the description um i had to split it in half to fit on my end of three bed which is why there's a bit of a gap there but i glued it and filled it and it should be all right when it's painted up, you shouldn't see it. Okay, so here is the completed almost UFC. Just needs a coat of black paint, which I'm waiting on. And then you can see in there, that's the USB plug. Um, I had to take that electrical connector out because I don't have, I got one of these right angle USB extensions, but I accidentally got the wrong way. So that's gonna go in and then I'll be able to route that thinner cable through that electrical connector. But now I had to take that out because this larger plug fits in there, but it won't make the bend. Um, I'll fix that up later. Uh, you can see the 3D print is not perfect, obviously, on the back here, but you can't see any of that because the um, the HUD camera box bolts over the back of that, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, anyway, which hopefully through the powers of editing, now I'll show you it running in the sim, I would have had that paint. Okay, so here we are in the jet. Uh, UFC is finished, obviously. Uh, you can see the case got a coat of black paint. I've also started weathering the whole thing. I've started um, dry brushing silver, as you can see, to make it give it that worn appearance. Uh, it's cool because it makes it look like metal rather than plastic. Um, and I think it came out really well. The uh, I still have to 3D print the proper knobs to cover that. Um, the dimming on this is on the same circuit as the whole rest of the cockpit. The uh, caution panel is currently out and on the workbench, and so are the radios and that's the new ARC-210 that's going in. Um, so this console knob here, which does all of the consoles, also does the backlighting on the UFC. You can see that once you go really, really bright, you can see light bleeding through the gap there. Um, but I never have it this bright anyway because it's overpowering. I sort of only ever have it at about that brightness, which means there's no light bleeding. Uh, one thing I thought I'd mention, so this these six buttons here were not used in DCSA 10, so I did custom labels for them and I used them for other things like the F10 map uh, and the 3D cockpit, and that switches between the 2D and the 3D warp. Um, yeah, so but I've just realised that with the DCSA 10 C2 update, because we get an R210 radio, these buttons will actually be used for that R210 radio. So I'm going to have to relocate those or use them for what they're properly used for in A10C2. And it shouldn't be an issue because I've got so many spare inputs on this. Like all of these rotor encoders are actually push buttons too. So I can um, I can sort of have that as the F10 map to toggle between the two. 
and of course there's that there I can use that as something so I'll go over the layout now in FreeCAD just makes it a lot easier for me to explain the changes I've made in FreeCAD rather than looking at the real thing because I'd have to pull it out of the room but um, you can see on the back here the general design of it uh, all I did I built this box here that's hollow on the back of it there so you got to pass through for cables to go into and then basically I built up on top of that so you can see the UFC that I made up there I've already shown you that you can see if I remove the HUD camera box here so you can see how this bottom plate here that I cut on the laser actually attaches to that front section and the glare shield itself and then you can also see the HUD so the HUD is it's got two pieces of plexiglass in it which I'll just turn off and it's just a representation of what the A10C HUD looks like. And you can see how I added the indexes on the side of it. You can see here I actually split it into two sections. That's only so it would fit onto the bed of my Ender 3 when I printed it. All of the STL files for this HUD, HUD frame and the UFC box and the camera are all um, available in the link underneath this. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like now in real life. Alright, so this is the HUD camera box you can see. I've just painted it in a the same spray paint, but I used a slate grey colour to mix it up a little bit. I uh, also haven't done the cables that are supposed to go over there. There's one of those mill connectors, and I've, right now I've only got the USB cable because I still haven't got that right angle thing. And this is also the completed um, HUD. You can see it's just the 3D print that I've painted it black, and I'm using the same indexes that I was using on the um, old version which are F16 style ones, which I've just done up these dodgy brackets. I'm also keeping the glare shields on them because they actually stop the glare from the projectors. The light from the projectors actually casts on that. You can see it on the bottom of that disconnect one. So that one is the same color as the other two above it, but because the projectors are shining down onto it, you can see it really obviously, which is why I left the glare shield on. But you can see they all work when you push the test button. Uh, so I still haven't finished this, so I just need to fix up that bottom bit and make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, and I've only put one, there is perspex in that. I've just put one sheet in there, there's, there's room for two, but I'm not putting two in there, I don't see the need to. I like it, it just looks a whole lot more realistic. I don't know why I didn't do a hut a long time ago, to tell you the truth, because I think it just makes the whole thing look like a jet, rather than a weird F-35 style thing I had going on there. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thanks heaps for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content. And thanks heaps. Oh, bear with me. I'm one-handed and doing this through a phone. Oh, that was dangerous.